Okay. Now, we will have uh, this topic we will discuss personally I think that this is the most important topic in the entire course curriculum because unless and until I do it rightly I have every effort of doing characterization, fluid particle interactions everything will go in vain. Okay. So, this is the topic of sampling. Now, to understand sampling I know that every one of you are familiar with these terminologies, but I want to rephrase it. Okay. So, the fundamental statistical terminologies if you look at that a measurement is considered to be accurate if the difference between the measured value and the true value falls within an acceptable margin. But the question is how do we know the true value that is the problem. So, what I am saying? So, we rely on statistics therefore, say suppose I repeat a test 336, 39 plus 5 14 and I am getting a value just like this and we say the result is very accurate. No, it does not guarantee the accuracy of your measurement, it guarantees the precision of your measurement by my data may be precise, but it may be inaccurate because my true value if I do not know my true value could be somewhere here and my measurements are giving always the value there. So, this is called the random error how much is the deviation and this is the systematic error from the true value to the your measured value and assay means how much is the percentage of that metal that is what is the grade of my ore. Okay. That means, I want to measure the how much of copper percentage in my ore that we call it assay. So, a random error or variation on average over a period of time 10 to 0 whereas, integrated systematic errors result in a net positive or negative value. So, what does it mean that when I have having all the data falling there so that means, there is a bias involved because why there is a deviation between your true value and measured value that means, there is a bias and we have to identify this bias. I give this example to understand properly that is a data may be precise, but it may not be accurate. I give this example like if I ask you that I want to know the average velocity of water coming through your tap and the kitchen tap. How do you do it? You take a bucket, uh, you know the volume of that, you look at your watch, how much time it takes to fill up. So, I know the average flow rate. Then you measure the area that what is the cross sectional area by a scale. I can easily calculate that what is the average velocity of that. If I do it 10 times, my measurement error could be within this limit. But if I say are you sure that that is the velocity? I do not know because what can happen that I am taking the cross section area of that by measuring the external your internal diameter, but just before that if there is a calcification and if the cross sectional area is less than say suppose what I am trying to say that I am this is my say suppose the tap opening and I have measured this as a suppose there is some calcification here. So, what is happening my actual cross section area is this, but I am considering this. So, my average velocity is something different which is not true. So, that true value is different. So, there is a bias, bias has come because of this calcification. So, if I want to know the true value, I have to inspect that, I have to understand that what is the or maybe some kind of equipment measurement devices I have to have. So, the bias is the difference between the true value and the average of a number of experimental values and hence is the same as the systematic error. The systematic error is nothing but the bias. The variance between repeated samples is a measure of precision or reproducibility. 
a data may be reproducible but it may not be repeatable you understand what is the difference between reproducibility and repeatability i request you to look at your textbooks okay there are differences reproducibility and repeatability okay now it only guarantee is that okay this is reproducible not more than that the difference between the mean of a series of repeat samples and the true value is a measure of accuracy how accurate is my data so minimizing or preferably eliminating biases is more important than improving precision for metallurgical accounting no point in having precisely incorrect values there is no point to have precisely incorrect values so how do i remove biases that is the challenge and that is what we try to uh, say discuss in this lecture through the sampling methods and all this how do i do it okay so you, we have already discussed this we don't have to spend more time on that so what is the variance variance is nothing but uh, basically it is written uh, through this formula and the standard deviation is the square root of that variance okay these are all standard things you all know this is another important term is confidence interval that is what we are talking we frequently use these days the softwares without understanding what is the basic statistics we use statistical softwares okay it 95% we say basically if you are using an excel you are having 10 data you just write stdv bracket you check all the data and then bracket close you get a value have you tried anyone you get the standard deviation value but that is only one sigma for engineering aspect for at least for laboratory test we need two sigma that is giving you 95% confidence interval so you must multiply it by 2 now what is the meaning of this confidence interval so 95% confidence interval means the suppose 30 uh, i am saying the value is 30 as standard deviation is 2 plus minus 2 at a 95% confidence interval that means i am guaranteeing that if i repeat the test 100 times out of that 95 times i am guaranteeing the value will lie in between 30 plus minus 2 remaining 5 test i am not giving any guarantee so if i want to increase that i have to go for 3 sigma so that means your standard deviation will go up that means you have to give more say your the values will go up so that is what actually we need that is the confidence interval how confident you are sir i am really confident that is not the answer confidence means whether it is 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 sigma even today we go for 6 sigma even up to 8 sigma that is possible okay people are going for that is for rocket science you need 8 sigma okay now what is sampling now sampling is the definition is procedure by which some members of a population are selected as a representative of the entire population this is our electoral system is a good example why we all have accepted narendra modi as our pm because we have a sampling system through which everybody has majority of the population have voted for him by some means we have got that say your uh, say your decision making tool okay that is the electoral system so that is the sampling system so you have to devise a system that is how that person will be selected out of this total 120 as a crores of population one person is selected how do you select that is by through sampling protocols so this is the process otherwise everybody will say that i want to occupy that chair so there must be having some procedure similarly when you need one gram of sample for which through which you will be doing the analysis that what is the grade of my ore that is probably representing a population of 100 20 billion ton of reserve how do i do that that is the process that is the call the process the call the sampling process okay now the subgroup the selected to represent the whole population is known as sample methods of sampling 
several methods are used to ascertain a particular aspect of the population through an unbiased sample drawn from the population. This is very, very strong word. We have to remove biases. The, when we are selecting this, that is they should be bias free, but how do I do it? That is the problem. So, sampling could be of two types that is probability sampling and non probability sampling. Many times I cannot go through the probability sampling that is based on statistics. So, we have to use some kind of non probability sampling also. So, what is probability sampling? Now, it is any method of sampling that utilizes some form of random selection that means is more dependent on statistics, we are giving random, uh, we are giving equal opportunity of each element in that system to be selected. That is, then the procedure should assure that the different units in the population have equal probabilities of being chosen, that is called probability sampling. Non probability sampling, it does not involve random selection may or may not represent the population well used when researcher lacks a sampling frame of the population. I give again, I go back again to the electoral system, what do you do? What the journalists are doing that is just after the election, they are just asking a few people at whom you have voted or whom you think, who you think that will come into them and then that may be a biased population. So, he may be interviewing only the super rich people or maybe the poorest of the poor or maybe only the middle class. So, that is an accidental sampling that is accidentally you got him that is why you are taking his comment and then you are basically saying that okay, this government will come, this party will come and all this. So, that is not through a sampling campaign. So, that is basically non probability best. So, that that is why Many times they may differ the predictions as accidentally they may also match, okay. but that is randomly selected that is not basically the proper way of selecting that. So, that is a non probability sampling because of what you can do within half an hour time you have to have a round table discussion based on this so what are the data you are getting. So, whom you have met you have just done it. Suppose you, you, you met only one student from IIT Kharagpur and uh, if you just pass a judgment that what is the uh, quality of the student of IIT or say behavior wise or somewhere that may be wrong, that may be correct, that may be wrong. So, you cannot give any confidence on that because that may be biased, that is an accidental one, but you have just met him. So, importance of sampling in mineral processing, why we need to know? There are many, many, many purposes are there. Assay analysis, that is, say, take example from coal that I before I start mining, what do we do? My exploration geologist, they give me some borehole samples, and then we prepare the sample and then we send it to the laboratory for analysis and that person again needs only 1 gram of sample to do the approximate analysis and he says that okay, the average as of this as of this coal is 30 percent, we are excited. They can accept only a particular size range. So, how do I know that what will be my size distribution of my mineral, what we am going to say mine. So, then characterization as I said you may need to characterize like I, I am going for flotation. So, I need to know the surface chemistry of that, I need to know some other EHPH diagram what will happen with that, okay. what type of chemicals will be useful for that particular uh, say surfaces. We do some Halliman type test, Halliman tube test with some few milligrams of sample, but if that sample is not truly representative then my entire exercise will go into vain. Okay. Then process control that I want to know that is I want to have an online size analysis system, but what is what is the range of that size distribution that I have decided from this analysis 
and that sample is not truly representing then I have a problem ok. The my process control system would not work. So, these are the on an average or uh, just a summarize if I summarize that what is the relevance of knowing sampling in mineral processing is the heart of the process I will say. Now, the question comes that how much of sample I need to bring from the mine site <coughs> to do my analysis, to do my size analysis, which will ensure that the entire population truly the sample I have taken it truly represents my entire the deposit. So, this is there is a correlation given by Pierre G Y there is a book written by him on sampling and his basic sample equation that is what would be the minimum mass of the sample, how much of sample I should have first. So, I cannot just pick up 1 kilogram or 2 kilogram of material, I have just gone to a mine, just spent couple of hours and then just picked up some particles, poured in a bag and brought into the lab and we do start doing characterization with sophisticated equipment. We have all sorts of sophisticated equipment, we do ACM, we do microstructure analysis, we do size analysis, we do assay analysis, what is the meaning? Because if that does not truly represent. So, the basic sample equation can be written as m l divided by l minus m is equal to c d q by s square, where m is the minimum weight of sample required that is in gram, the units are very important ok. L is the gross weight of material to be sampled. So, what is my population? I have to have some idea about my reserve, is it 100 million ton, is it 100 ton? is it 100 kg or what ok. Then C capital C is the sampling constant for the material to be sampled, I will explain how do I get C, again there are formulas for that. D is the dimension of the largest pieces in the material to be sampled, that is in centimeter. That means, if the rock, if the material what I am trying to collect from the mine site is it a blasted rock? If it is a blasted rock, what is the coarsest fragment available there? What is the largest size? So, because that has got a size distribution. Say, so, suppose I have what I am saying that why it is important. Suppose I have got 1 ton of material consisting only of 5 particles, only 5 particles, the very huge boulders. I can have 1 ton of material each weighing around 200 kg. Then what do I do? How do I select? And out of that 5 particles, one is totally rock, another one is pure coal and remaining 3 are distributed coal and rock they are at different proportions. How do I select? I cannot select anywhere, I have to take all the material, I can otherwise I will be inducing a bias. So, what is the largest piece? So, I have to look at the dimension of the largest pieces in the material to be sampled that will also determine that how much of sample I have to take ok. So, and S is the measure of the statistical error committed by sampling, how much of tolerance is acceptable. That means, in the sampling process how accurate you want the data more accuracy means more money, more effort, more people required. So, that is also very, very important that what is that accuracy level, what is the tolerance level I need. So, in most cases m is small in relation to l that is the in relation to total population. So, I can simplify this equation as m is equal to c d q by s square ok. Now, how do I find C and D and S that I will talk about? Now, first thing is that that is the S that is the error that is the most important thing. Now, this is the diagram what I am trying to show that is say suppose from mine site you have taken this much of sample 
and when you are analyzing it you are getting you only need a sample mass of this much. So, there has to be reduction of your quantity at each stage and the number of steps it is getting involved there will be some error. Okay. So, I must know at each stages what are the errors it is called the propagation of error. Okay. So, this is your primary sample, this is your secondary sample, this is your analysis, this is your result. Okay. My goal is this, this x should be equal to this mu that is my actual one okay. as in reality that is the true value. So, how do I know the propagation of errors that is your s x is equal to sum of all the errors and square of that. Okay. So, examples so if it is there is error of 5 percent here it is 2 percent and here 1 percent. So, my total error will be 5.5 percent. So, that is my goal is equal to x is equal to mu. Now, someone says no I want to bring down to 1.5 percent. So, what I have to do? So, I have to now go back to this that where from that 5 percent error has come then I have to put more money, more manpower, more sophisticated technique to minimize that. But if someone says that I am ok with 5.5 percent, but what is the confidence interval? So, that you have to give ok that depends on uh, your repeated samples and all this you know repeat analysis. Analytical process usually contains several sampling and sample preparation steps. Okay. Now, if you look at the propagation of error, we call it global estimation of error. Now, it can be divided into two major components, one is that total analytical error that means during analysis how much is the error, very common error in how many of you have done proximate analysis, please raise your hand. Okay. How do you do it in a muffle furnace or in a automatic? analyzer Leco, muffle furnace. Okay. Now, see where from the error can come in analysis. Now, what is the temperature required for ash analysis? 825 degree centigrade. Okay. How do you know that your coal has undergone 825 degree centigrade? You are looking at the temperature indicator of the furnace. How it is measuring? Have you ever asked? In a furnace, how does it indicate that it is 825? There is a thermocouple. Where is the thermocouple located? See, this is your dimension of your furnace, okay, inside. Your thermocouple is located here. Okay. There it is measuring 825, but if your sample is here, can you guarantee that here also it was 825? You just measure that it will be difference in that temperature. That brings the error in analysis okay, where I am doing that. So, maybe some unburned carbon could be there. So, these are the probable reasons in analytical errors. My sophisticated equipment mostly they work on the principle of calibration. So, when it was last calibrated, calibration means for a known sample I have done the analysis and I have plotted a curve with the known samples. Now, for unknown sample I am getting that value I am comparing it, but when it was last calibrated. Whether the calibrated sample was really displaying the true value. So, this could be the errors you know the human errors okay. I was not very careful I was in a hurry and all this. So, but normally if you are careful if your analytical tools are sophisticated or say up to date not much of error you have from this total analytical error and it can be minimized. It can be minimized by investing more on the sophistication of measurement and on quality of manpower who will be doing that okay. that can be minimized. But look at total sampling error now again it can be of different types of error. So, I have summarized it that is your this total sampling error could be a function of your point materialization error 
that is called P A M E and it is again a function of it is had three components that is increment delimitation error I will show you what is that increment extraction error increment and sample preparation error. So, that is I D I X C and I P E I have written it in different colors that is a purpose. Now, there are other errors that is your P A C that is your long range point selection error then periodic point selection error ok F S C is basically fundamental sampling error and then grouping and segregation error. Now, you see that the last three components require special attention there is three particularly when sampling for metallurgical accounting purposes because they can introduce sampling bias. The next slide I will show you that how it can introduce sampling bias. So, this I can control by if I know that what is that. However, they can be eliminated even ok. The others are largely random errors that can never be completely eliminated. So, no sampling scheme is entirely perfect. Is there any prime minister is elected where 100 percent vote was in favor of him? No, it cannot. So, uh, it is not possible rather, but I do not know maybe it is possible at some time, but it has not happened yet ok. So, the others are largely random errors that can never be completely eliminated. So, what I have tried to say that whoever is the PM not 100 percent of our population will be satisfied with his selection. So, no sampling campaign can guarantee you that you have done the accurate sampling that is nothing like called accurate sampling that how much is the error you have to always say that ok. But they can be reduced to acceptable levels by careful design of the sampling system ok. You see this this is I will show you a sampling delimitation error which can be totally eliminated that type of thing. You say this I want to sample both the particles the black and your coarser particle and the pink and small particles and this is coming through a conveyor belt. I have devised a sampler and it is sampling it after a certain time interval, but I am saying it is incorrect it is having some error uh, some bias. What is that bias? Can anyone guess? Yes, it is biased towards the small and pink particles it is collecting more of them in each sample. So, what will happen after that if I say that what is the average percent relative percentage of this pink and black particles you will get a different value. What is the chemical composition of the pink particles and what will be the average percentage now you do analysis whatever analysis you do that is having a bias towards the pink particles that is what I wanted to say, but this can be eliminated how I will show you that is the correct one. <coughs> now, you are giving equal opportunity to both the particles to be selected ok. So, this is called the basically how you give the probability sampling that is based on statistics. So, this is how you can eliminate all these three types of errors and that is basically you can reduce the bias and that is the meaning of the bias ok is it clear ok. Now, so it is very important then how my sampling device should be designed ok and then now I come back to this I forgot to mention that now say suppose this movement is very fast then what will happen? Again if it is very fast there is a chance that some of the particles may hit the side walls of that and they may go out of the system. So, I am not collecting again I have a problem if it is too slow 
that means over a period of time I will be collecting on a very small sample. So, that is not serving my purpose. Okay? So, the correct design of that, now suppose this opening is very small. Now, so suppose opening is very small where even this a single large particle cannot pass through, then also I will be having bias towards the pink particles. So, what should be the design of my sampling device, what should be the operating conditions. So, there are correlations that is if I have a, b and c these three dimensions of that. So, b is equal to constant it should be less than equal to 0 0.6 meter per second these are all uh, devised by basic statistics these are all standards international community has accepted it. This is for powdered samples this is for your granular materials we can say. Okay. But for slurry it could be different. I am not talking about slurry, it is a dry samples, okay, powdered samples. And what should be the dimensions of this? Now, if d that is the largest size of the particle is greater than 3 millimeter, then my b that is the width of this that is the spacing should be greater than or equal to 3 d. That means, it should accommodate at least at the same time three particles of that size that should be able to pass through. Why three, why not four, why not five, why not two? There is also a statistics behind that, but I cannot get into that detail, okay. but that is a normal rule. Okay. So, if they are three millimeter, my this weight should be at least 10 millimeter. And if d is less than three millimeter, it should be greater than equal to 10 millimeter. Okay. So, if, we, if it is the greater size is 5 millimeter, it should be greater than equal to 15 millimeter. That is how I devise, I, I design my say the dimensions of this and d is equal to diameter of largest particle b 0 is equal to minimum opening of the sample cutter. Okay. Now, the correct increment, correct design of proportional sampler is basically the correct increment extraction that is how you are uh, say actually extracting the material. And then how long you will be doing it? It depends on what are the requirement, how frequently you need to do that, that I will discuss. Okay. Now, incurrent increment and sample preparation errors, there are two other errors. Okay. I have said three errors, one error I have so discussed that is basically coming from your improper selection of your design or maybe the machine design and all this can come. The incurrent increment and sample preparation errors can come which can be avoided easily that is contamination. That is contamination means suppose I have collected a proper sample from the mine site, I have brought it to my lab, I want to do the size analysis or maybe I have to do chemical analysis of that, but I have just left it in open atmosphere what will happen? Suppose coal, coal if I bring it and then it is no, normally it is naturally gets oxidized. So, the properties of the coal surfaces will be different. Now, if I am doing a test for knowing that whether the coal is floatable or not, I will get a different response. Now, suppose it is just lying there and Every day your sweeper is coming and sweeping and mopping that and then it is accumulated, dust is getting accumulated and it is contaminating. By some mistake you have thrown some other dust, but when you are doing analysis the dust is also getting analyzed. So, you are getting a different result that is called contamination. Okay. So, maybe the container that is rusted where you have put it, so your iron particles will be there with the rust. So, I may be saying that my sample is also having iron, but actually you do may not have any iron, it is the contamination, it happens, but be very careful about that. Losses, suppose I want to do moisture analysis, I have brought a sample from my side, I want to do the moisture analysis, how do I do it? I put it at 105 or 110 degree centigrade for half an hour and then by doing weight loss method I get to know, but suppose my material is hygroscopic. Suppose the humidity changes, relative humidity changes, the temperature differs, there could be evaporation, there could be more accumulation of moisture. 
So, I may not be getting exact value of moisture what I exactly sampled. So, I may have a wrong information about that. Alteration of chemical conservation, chemical composition, it can happen if it is a reactive material, the composition may be changed like calcium chloride if you I take you know and if you preserve it in an open atmosphere, it is hygroscopic material, you have your different chemical composition. So, what you are measuring the your analysis will be different. Okay. Alteration of physical composition like there could be agglomeration, if my particles are basically a nature of this, this is a sticky material they can get agglomerated. And when I am doing particle size analysis, I am getting a different analysis, different sizing. I may be having breaking of particles, mostly happens with coal, coal is very friable. So, during transportation from the my side to my IIT Kharagpur, if I have brought it through your lot of shaking or jerking is there, then my coal particles may be broken. So, I may be having a different size distribution than what exactly what it used to have. So, I have to take care of that. Involuntary mistakes very common with the students. Involuntary mistakes means when the pressure is coming from the professor, you will do it overnight, hurry. What will happen? This tag goes there, that tag goes here and you report these two and then you come to the professor, sir I have got this data. Professor can no way find that what is the problem and it is the your involuntary mistake, you have just misplaced the tags. So, you are reporting and you are you, you keep on saying sir what can I do, I am getting this type of data. Sometimes the professor might think that I have got a new research area but it is basically involuntary mistake. Okay. <laughs> so, so, mixed sample numbers, okay. lack of knowledge, many times we are employing for this you know we see that oh kachra vajra sab karna mera kaam nahi hai usko, we employ some daily laborers and all this, they are totally ignorant about this and we leave entire, we give entire responsibility to them, but they do not know. They may be doing upar uh, dust ho hai, thoda dhul ho hai, fek do. but that dust is gone. So, you had size distribution changed, your chemical analysis changed, everything changed. Okay. So, be very careful about that negligence, owing balance, I am just taking the weight, okay. I do not know, I have not checked the precision, I have not checked the condition of my weighing balance, I am just saying that it is 1 gram or that is giving me 1.2 grams basically. I am just noting it down that is negligence. So, these things brings bars into your analysis into your entire thing which can be totally removed if you are careful if you take cautious and all this. Okay. Deliberate faults industry people that is why the problem with the your um, because it is getting recorded you know I cannot give examples, but many times most of the times I want to sell a product I know that I have not reached the, the coal washery people are sitting here they want to sell 18 percent as otherwise sale will not buy it, but how many times they really deliver 18 percent as okay, sale is also here. So, they, 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 they sell they know that you have got 20 percent as but they will say no this is my analysis this is 18 percent in the laboratory they will show it, but that is a got up case. Okay. So, that is not that is a delivery fault because he is under pressure to sell it otherwise there will be penalty. So, that is a delivery fault now the delivery errors in increment delimitation forgery you know we can forge many times students they force the data please do not do that okay. otherwise uh, you will have a different a perception of your research and all this you know, you will be in a totally in a ridiculous shape that you do not know what happens, you start doing that and you get into that malpractice, please do not do that. If you have not done it, you admit that I have not done it, that is fine, but do not try to forge your data. Okay. Uh, I will show you one good example, then I will come back to the basic equation C d q by s square, I have I am only talking about s. Okay. This is a good ex example, you know that we can use the fundamental sampling error, we can estimate by using Poisson distribution. I hope most of you are familiar with this. 
Now, Poisson distribution describes the random distribution of rare events in a given interval. Okay. If mu n is the number of critical particles in sample, the relative standard deviation expressed as the number of particles is 1 by square root of mu n, that is the Poisson distribution. Now, I can apply this, I will show you a very small case study, it is not a case study, it is a dialogue that where I can use the Poisson distribution to get into some conclusion. Okay. Example. The plant manager comes to a sampling consultant. Okay. He has got a problem. He is saying that I am producing fine ground limestone that is used in paper mills for coating printing paper, as the usual case. Okay. According to their specification, that means the paper company, the my product must not contain more than 5 particles per ton larger than 5 micron, you see the specification. The manufacturer of paper coating who supplies the limestone, he imposed a condition that I will buy your material, but you have to guarantee that not more than 5 particles per ton should be larger than 5 micron, that means rest of the particles are smaller than that and in one ton. Can you guess how many particles are there? Okay. How should I sample my product? Suppose he has come to you as a sampling expert, you have taken a course on this and you think that you are an expert. So, what should be your reply? You know, The sampling expert, the comment is that is a bit too general a question. What sort of accuracy he wants? He has, posed, he has posed that condition that 5 percent what is the tolerance limit. So, said that 20 percent relative standard deviation for the coarse particles be sufficient, 20 percent deviation. What does it mean? So, plant manager says yes, then the sampling expert says oh well let us consider the problem. We could use the Poisson distribution to estimate the required sample size, let us see what will happen. So, the maximum relative standard deviation is 20 percent, we can write it as 0.2. So, from equation 2 that is 1 by square root of sigma n, we can estimate how many coarse particles there should be in the sample to have this standard deviation. So, that is n is equal to 1 by s r square that is 1 by 0.2 square that is 25. Are you getting there? So, what does it mean? So, that means, if 1 ton contains 5 coarse particles, this result means that the primary samples should be 25 tons. That means, I must sample 25 tons of material, that is my primary goal, that is what is the quantity of material I should have. This is a good example of an impossible sampling problem. Now, 25 tons of material, can you do size analysis to ensure that not more than 5 micron particles should be 5 into 25, that is 125 numbers. 25 tons of material less than 5 micron. I have to do size analysis to ensure that not more than 125 particles are there which is having size more than 5 micron. It is an impossible task. You cannot do it. So, the this is a good example of an impossible sampling problem. Even though you could take a 25 ton sample, there is no feasible technology to separate and count the coarse particles from it. You should not try the traditional analytical approach in controlling the quality of your product. You should not jump into conclusion that I have got a project, I will take a consulting project, but how you are doing it, how you are going to do it, do not accept that. Instead, if the specification is really sensible, what does it mean? You ask him that is why your customer needs that specification, why he is worried about coarser than 5 micron particles, what happens to his coating, what happens to your industry, that is what I always say that why do I need to do this, why do I need to characterize it. So, if you are convinced that that is sensible, yes more than 5 mic 5 particles more than 5 micron that will 
create problems in his process, then what you do advise that that is <coughs> uh, why did I stop? Yes, that you should not try the traditional analytical approach instead if the specification is really sensible you forget the particle size analyzers and maintain the quality of your product by process technological means. That is you take care that all equipment are regularly serviced and their high performance maintained to guarantee the product quality. That means you put more concentration, you take more care on your upstream processes where you are grinding your limestone samples. You can no way sample it and do the analysis and can guarantee. You cannot check, you cannot have a process control instrument to do that. Okay? So, this is a good example where you cannot do sampling, you cannot give guarantee. Okay? But plant manager says thank you. Okay? So, now I am coming back to that. So, I have discussed about the sampling error. Okay? Now, the sampling constant C is specific to the material being sampled. That means, I have to know the material characteristic, taking into account the mineral content and its degree of liberation. I must know the liberation size, that is what I said. If I have five very big boulders, one is pure rock, another one is coal. So, if I do not have liberation size analysis, I cannot do that sampling. Okay? That is very, very important. And then C is again calculated based on this formula F G L M, where the F is a safe factor. I have to know the particle shape also. The safe factor which is taken as 0.5 except for gold loads, where it is 0.2 because of flaky nature of gold. Okay. G is a factor which is dependent on the particle size range. That what is the topmost size, what is the bottommost size, what is the size range I have to sample, that also I have to know. So, basically, this is what I am trying to show that f is equal to 0.5 in most of the cases by default, but if I have different shapes, I can take that, you know. Now, what is that size range? That is d by d dash, that is if the coarsest size and the finest size, the ratio is greater than 4 then the g is equal to 0.25. If d by d dash is within 2 to 4, g is equal to 0.5, d by d dash is less than 2, g is equal to 0.75, if it is 1, g is equal to 1. That means, I do not have distribution, I have only mono size particle. So, the g is equal to 1. Okay? The more the spread, the uh, uh, lesser the number, that is the 0.25. Okay? So, L that is basically coming from your liberation one and G y has proposed that L by d to the power half and you know how do I get it? That is d by L, if it is less than 1 then L is equal to 1. Like that he has given a range that based on the liberation size with respect to your coarsest size. That is L stands for your liberation size and d stands for is the coarsest size. So, Depending upon that ratio, these are the values for that. This is a G wise book, you can get this. And what is the meaning of L by D? That means, that is the D that is the size of my particle and where L is my liberation size of this material. Okay. That is the meaning of L by D. Now, M is a mineralogical composition factor which can be calculated from the expression M is equal to 1 minus A by A. 1 minus a into r plus a t, where r and t are the mean densities of the valuable mineral and gang minerals respectively. So, I must know that what are the densities of my wanted mineral and my unwanted mineral. Otherwise, my weight of sample is dependent on the average density of my mineral particles I am sampling. And A is the fractional average mineral content of the material being sampled. This value could be determined by assigning a number of samples of the material. So, you have to do some preliminary test also. And that is how you can get to know M is equal to C d cube by S square. So, I discuss how do you get S, 
how do I get C, you know what is the D, okay. But what is the limitation of this? We will run some tutorials to get into these values, okay. How do I use these values? Do not worry. But the limitation of this, this is saying that if the particle characteristic, the entire population, the general behavior is like this, that is my size range varies from this to this, my entire population is this. If the liberation behavior is this, then I have to get this much of sample, but it does not tell me how do I collect that. It tells me only that how much of sample is required, but how do I collect it? So, that is the major limitation of this GYs basically the equation. Okay. So, how do I get it? How do I collect that sample? That needs planning of sampling. What do I mean by planning of sampling? What I have to do? So, I have to have this first this information in my hand. I have to gather these informations. First thing I must ask that what are the analytes to be determined? I give two examples. So, suppose I want to know how much of gold is there. Gold as I said, it is already in very in ppm level and in another case for Indian iron ore the average percentage varies from 58 to 65 percent okay, the iron content. So, whether I am doing this sampling for doing analysis for gold or iron ore and the values are also different. Whether I want to make sure that whether it is diamond or not the analysis is different you know. So, I must know what is the analyte for what for which I am planning this sampling because the value associated with that will tell me that how much of care I have to take and that incurs some cost also. Then what kind of estimates are needed? Is it from a plant that is on an average basis that is hourly basis, day basis, shift basis, batch basis, shipment basis what? That means, how frequently I need this data, this analyze to be determined, okay. That, that is also my part of my sampling campaign. Then I must know the distribution pattern, that is what is the degree of heterogeneity of the determinant in the lot, how they are distributed, what are the highest values, what are the highest possible values, what are the lowest possible values, that means what could be the range. Okay, that also I should have some knowledge that whether I am sampling an iron ore deposit which is having iron contain of varies from say 40 to 50 percent very low grade. Maybe if we talk uh, the sale person that I am working on a sampling campaign for 40 to 50 percent iron he said uh, as useless we do not care about 40 to 50 percent iron we are rich enough we are having more than 60 percent everywhere. So, what is that we are trying to do? What is the range okay, we are having? Is there available useful a priori information? That means, have we got any preliminary data available with us? Like your variance estimates, unit cost, is all the necessary personnel and equipment available? I am doing that, but how many people we require? Are they all trained? Do you have the necessary equipment for that? I am saying that okay, we will go to the plant and we will collect sample that should be very accurate, but I need this, this, this machine, where from that machine will come? Do I have that? Or is somebody willing to pay me to procure all this equipment? So, that means how much is the cost involved into the sampling campaign, which is very less in our country because people do not give much weightage. Even you are planning for a say few thousand crores of investment, but if you say that for sampling you spend only 1 crore or 2 crores rupees, they will say no, we do not have money, but they should invest more on this to save some money for their investment, which we are not doing. So, what is the maximum cost or uncertainty level of the investigation? That is, what is the level of accuracy I need? These are the questions I must know, I must have answer before we plan for sampling. We will continue this 